Hello, we are live today is Monday, January 2nd, 2017. Happy New Year, everyone. Um, I will do channeling right now. We are starting a new book with Jim and other helpers. It will be basically a summary of the information we got through channelings about aliens and angels and um, higher dimensions, higher worlds. And it would be transcripts plus commentary or commentary plus transcripts. And it is intended for teenagers, for smart teenagers. So it doesn't have to be very simplistic, but it is for people who are not I don't know this word, not muddled, not muddied, not dirtied by, uh, not polluted by the past. So for open souls, it's intended for open souls. So we don't start from destroying the old stuff. We just start from explaining the new stuff. That's basically the main concept. We just tell how it is. So we invite transcripts. Also the, um, there is more discussion on Facebook now, Hukolo group on Facebook, than on uh, Hukolo, humancolon.org. So I moved my discussions to Facebook. So join us there. It's, uh, it's just the platform which seems to be working faster and less maintenance, and uh, that is easier to, to find people there. If you are worried about your identity, um, make a second Facebook account, use Firefox and Chrome, or on if, if it is on Android, use a parallel, I think it's called parallel application, which allows you to run two parallel Facebooks. Okay, um, I think that's it for now. So we invite transcript, uh, transcript helpers, and um, um, you can contact us through humancolony.org, through Facebook, and you can write to me at max at humancolony.org. And um, are there any questions before, I, uh, before we start? All right. Um, whoever wants to give a blessing, go ahead with your blessings, and I will start... Uh, my meditation to bring in Yogananda. Thank you. Thank you, man. Iya kata maya tu, iya tata iya naku watata iya naku wata iya niniaku. Oatata na yaka, aya la kuwa na 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 awa kuwa ta na na ya kuwa. Aya chun siya katatati na na la ayo kuwa na 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 iyo kuwa. Iya ta na iya iyo kuulu kuwa na na ta kiyo tuwa na na kiyo kuwa na ta. Namaste. Can you hear me now? Hello, hello, hello. Should be yes. working now. Yay! Yes. It was a microphone which was blocked, but it's, it's a great microphone. I don't know why it doesn't work. All right, now every, when everything works, you can go ahead with your other um, blessings. I will, I'll meditate and then I'll come back in a couple of minutes. I mean, you're gonna under, I'll come. <clears throat>
Hello, good day, dear ones. Ah, oh, gosh. Hello. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, welcome. Thank you. Mm. All right. Hello, I will start with the idea of kindness to yourself. <sighs> How to deal with the people who make you angry? How to relate to the events which made you afraid? Start with love. And start with love to yourself. There are many forms of love many expressions of love, many flavors of love. Today, focus on kindness to yourself. Be yourself. Find yourself. Look inside. <clears throat> Be in your heart. Be in your vibration. Be in your flame. And make this flame grow. Take care of your flame as a gardener. Make it grow. Give it food. Give it food of love. Give it, give it food of kindness. Give it food of compassion. Give it food of care. These days the world is immersed in discordance, in a discordant sound, in a discordant, in a discordant vibration. People get excited and the excitement is discordant people get angry and even their anger is discordant there is dissonance disagreement and this disagreement causes the fall in vibration and that fall in vibration that got downgrade downfall of vibration is pouring onto you like a rain like a flood look for purity in yourself look inside and find that purity and in the darkness Garden your life, garden your light, bring up your light, shine in the darkness. That purity is in you, be kind to yourself, be kind to your body and be kind to your path, because the path is what lights your fire. Make it, it's yours, it is your choice. It is your primary responsibility, your path. And even if you don't see it, choose anyway. Create it, develop it. And if a darkness, if a wave of darkness comes unto you, Remember 
to make a choice for positive. Remember that there is always a choice for positive, a choice for happiness. Smile not because it comes from outside, but smile from inside. Smile with a smile of wisdom. Smile with a smile of knowingness. You know better. You know God. Smile with the smile of the Creator. Understand, if somebody makes you angry, the only reason is because they are part of your vibration. If they weren't part of your vibration, you wouldn't even notice them. If you dislike someone, it is a reflection of your inner vibration. As you rise up, as you shift up, you will become happier. You are determined to become happier. As you smile and garden your flame, you will lift up and you will stop noticing. You will not even notice the others who make you angrier or the others who make you afraid or the events which make you angry or afraid. You will not notice darkness because in the higher vibration is light. As you become lighter, you are attracted up in vibration. You are attracted to happiness. You become it. So be kind to yourself, and you, as you become happier, you will forgive those who offended you. You will forgive those who made you angry. You will forgive those who made you afraid. It is a natural process. The only effort required from you is to choose to smile, is to choose happiness. Any questions so far? How is the sound? How is the sound? It's all good, thank you. Thank you. A second idea which comes from the first is gardening. Until now, you wanted the future so much. You pushed for the future so much. You wanted the progress. You wanted to move forward and you wanted the system to change. And now the process of the change has started. The system is shaken and it is about to fall. It is inevitable. It is inevitable. And as it is falling, it might become a magnific magnificent fall. Many good things might be buried under the weight of the system. Embrace the change. Understand the fall is inevitable. But the destruction of good things is not necessary. The destruction of good things is not desirable. You want the transformation, but you don't want the destruction of good things. You don't want the suffering of any sort of suffering especially the suffering of innocent. So embrace a gardener in yourself. Embrace kindness in yourself. 
desire the change because of kindness, because the change is healing, because the change is necessary, because it is time for the humanity to ascend, and the change is long overdue. You want the information to come out. You want the total awakening. You want the awakening of the humanity. You want people to realize the spiritual truths, the political truths, the economical truths, and the galactic truths. So the information got to come out and people got to awaken welcome it at the same time take charge take responsibility take the responsibility of saving the good vibrations of embracing the good of the past as a gardener you rea you see the garden being changed you say what you can to save you say what you can save do say what you can save. Mm. And this is all for now. I invite comments and questions. I have a question. Thank you. When, when, how, when you try to forget uh, something that somebody did wrong in the past, and you try to forgive the person, and you try to forget about it, but it, it is still there in your heart. How do you, how do you, purposely get rid of that feeling? Thank you. I understand. Can you add a bit of substance to this question? Can you give an example, if it is okay, if it is appropriate? When somebody has wrong do you in the past and you decide to forget and forgive, uh, but the pain is still there. So you still feel the pain, even though you've decided to, uh, to, to forgive the person. How do you get rid of this pain? Is it related to love? Yes. Is it related to romantic love? Yes. Thank you. Realize that it is often not possible to heal from the place where you are now, to resolve the problem from the place where you are now. So the straightest, simplest way is to raise up and solve it from a higher level. When you become a new you, when you change, when you evolve, when you mature, when you reconnect with your inner core, you gain the new wisdom and you, the new knowledge. And then from that point, it is solvable, it is healable, it is resolvable. 
So that's the work you got to do. So not forgetting, but resolving on mental, emotional, energetic, and spiritual levels, and many sub-levels. It is a work that needs to be done. Realize that very often the romantic relationships are given to you not for eternity, but for a lesson which has a beginning and the end. Realize that often it is pre-planned and it is the service which is done for your spiritual growth. So accept it with gratitude. The pain which you received when processed, when incorporated, when internalized becomes a crystal in your spiritual spine, spiritual design. So working with it, working on yourself, it is all about you, working on yourself and forgiving, understanding, Understanding where you were different when you were misinterpreting the events. Understanding what you learn about yourself. Understanding yourself in this relationship. Understanding what would others do instead if they were in your place? Understanding when you realize the mechanics of the relationship on an emotional level, you understand it. And when you understand it, it's for, forgiven. Because that understanding on an emotional level, it's hard to explain with word, but that's what it is. You first understand on mental and then on emotional. So understanding and accepting on emotional level as a lesson with gratitude allows you to grow. And after you grow, as you raise up, it will be, this pain will be so natural, it will not be painful anymore. It will become just a past lesson, a knowledge, a skill. So you, the pains make you stronger after they are processed. You never get too much pain. It's always something which you can manage. And it's usually on the borderline. It just you cannot manage more, but it is just about maximum of what you can manage. So it's given to you and breathe. And when you have time, when you have a moment of, when you are in your energetic body, when you are in your meditation, when you are in your contemplation state, return to this pain and work on it, heal it, accept it, accept it and transform it. Invite helpers from the spirit. Invite kind souls from the reality. Share with them. Because sometimes you need a healer. So invite the healer to speak about it. And when another soul looks at your pain and touches it with its healing vibration, it helps it to heal and transform into a crystal, 
which makes you stronger. And as you do it, you discover a lot of new discoveries about yourself. You discover more about yourself. You move forward, you transform. You become stronger, you become, your flame becomes brighter. And you smile on your past you and be kind to that previous you. It was a different formula. Part of it was exactly you and part of that is gone and part of it is gone so you remember the pain but it's not burning anymore and so at some point it becomes strength yeah, just strength it you look at it you remember it you don't have to forget you remember it and it gives you strength and pride and kindness nothing more no pain anymore it is transformed into good there's a process, and you just got to go through it. Keep breathing, keep meditating, keep contemplating, but smile. Decide to look at it from the smile perspective. Decide to look at it from the happy perspective. Yes, it is sad. It is often an unborn child. Yes, it is often a child which could have been born, but wasn't. So it is a missed opportunity. But just take it neutrally. Their va values which you attach to events are your choices. You can take it, you can look at it from your new perspective and attach to it a neutral value. So smile and breathe. I invite more questions or comments on that question. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Max. Sure. Yes. I have a question for my sister-in-law, Pam Munson. She's sitting here with me. And the question is, um, her mother passed, her name is Erlene Maple and she passed uh, two years ago now. Um, her question is she's wondering if she was reunited and at peace with her son, Rick Hall, who passed years before her. What are their birthdays? 1159, oh, 1159, January 1159, 6, 12, and June 12th, 1936. January, which, which date of January? 11. 11. Ah. Hmm. And June? 12th. So Rick is June 12th. And um, what's the name of the m mother? Erlene is June 12th. Erlene, the mother, is June 12th. Oh, Erlene, June 12th. And Rick and is January 11th. Yes. Mm. Mm.
So absolutely yes, absolutely yes. These are a couple which go together from incarnation to incarnation. And this is a perfect couple, wonderfully matched. <laughs> they give it each other tons of lessons and progress really well. They made the wonderful progress in this life. And they are due for the incarnation due to be born right now in Japan in the same family. as two sisters. Oh, that's great. They did well. They made wonderful progress. Any more questions on that topic? Thank you, Max, thank you. Any more questions on any topic? Um, I, I have one if uh, nobody has another one. Thank you. It's not relevant uh, to what we've uh, been talking before, but I just wanted to ask, um, there is like an elephant energy around. Um, and uh, I've been feeling frequencies uh, uh, I've been I've been feeling that they've been sending frequencies. Uh, could you could you tap on that and maybe talk about it? Carolina, remind me your birthday. First of December, eighty one. Thank you. Angie has been feeling as well, and Khan is drawing elephants. Say again. Angie from this webinar is feeling uh, elephant energy as well, and I Khan, see. Khan has been drawing elephants too. Ah. Ah. <clears throat> It is the energy of crystallization of grandiosity, grandiosity, of grandeur, of things becoming bigger. It's an imperial, no, it's not. It's not an imperial spirit, but there is something royal in it, something royal. 
it relates to the crystallization of the matrix. Dragons and elephants send the energy to Earth because it is receptive. Our 3D, your 3D, our 3D. The matrix is transforming. The reality is shifting. The change already has begun. And this energy supports big things, big forms of dragons and elephants and whales. Dragons, elephants, and whales. It's here. Things will be big. And connecting to these energies will help you to pass through the transformation, through the shift, invite them, dragons, elephants, and whales, to assist, to support you in the, in the change. As you connect to these energies, they will give you energy. Think big. Until now, much of your world was in the lower levels of society. No, at the closer, not lower, at the closer circle of the society. Now you have been invited to think globally and to think royally about big processes, about war and peace, about the origins of the species and the future of the species, origins of the universe and the future of the universe. Think big. And as you think big, you are given bliss, you are given energy to ascend you got to think big. And as you reach up, as you reach up, at the same time you reach within. It is the same circle. When you reach up, you end up, you, you end up inside. You end up, you make a circle and you become you yourself. You, as you think globally, elephantly, mammothly, Max? Yes. It's Shirley again? Yes. My question is, um, my father uh, crossed over when I was nine years old. He was killed in his plane, and um, I'm now 49. I had him come through very strongly when I was about 30, and uh, I myself connected with his energy very strongly about three years ago. Um, I would like to know if he is reincarnated or not. What's his birthday? His birthday is May 2nd, 1940, I believe. His name is Steve Huta. Yes, he's a teenager girl in India. He has many sisters. She has many sisters. And she's very, very, very westernized. 
and her English is good. <laughs> and she loves smartphones. And dancing. And she's in love. <laughs> and she loves Indian food. <laughs> and sweets. She's pretty. All is good. The lessons for this life are, yeah, becoming a light worker. She is aware, but um, but not fully engaged. She is aware. This new generation, they are aware. But yes, she is more like in this 3D life yet. She 3D love yet, but there is much hope in her, much promise in her, much promise. And your father is still available. That personality didn't disappear from the spirit. So you can still talk to him. It is an aspect of the new. So the fact that he incarnated doesn't prevent you from communicating to him. He is still available. That personality is still to your service. And he smiles. And he shows you a basketball. And it goes into the basket one after another, one after another. No misses. Oops, you miss, he missed. And again, yes, 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 miss. And a fish. A happy fish in the in a lake and a cloud and a rainbow fish cloud and a rainbow right thank you so much um i have a second question yes um i was just recently told that um I was seen, um, I guess, um, asked my spirit name was from someone and they didn't have a spirit name, but what was told to me was the phrase, walk silent with pause and this huge timber wolf. Can you, and, it, and it's like this huge timber wolf was of a, a medicine, uh, like a medicine timber wolf and it carried four essences. If you could give me any, any more information on, on, on that, what I carry or what the guide of the timber wolf is with me. Again, the phrase was walks with silent pause, P-A-W-S. Ah. Hmm. Hmm. I see a cave and a fire inside. And it is a temple, a temple in the mountain. And there is a three young girls sitting around the fire. And there is an eye on the altar, a big eye on the altar. And the light which comes out of is smiling. Is smiling. It's a happy light. 
And the sounds which I have given to you are zo. Z O zo. And that's about it. Thank you. Any more comments, questions? Hi. Hi. Hello, it's Kina. I have a question. Can I ask? Yes, Kina. How are you? Thank you, Max and you, Gananda. Thank you. We are good. Uh, I would like to know uh, if we are a creator and um, uh, we have the power of uh, choosing uh, why we cannot ascend by intention in one second. Why we, because we have blockages, but I won't overcome those blockages in one second because I can do it, but uh, when I try, I feel the blockages and I cannot overcome. Um, uh, if, uh, do you understand? Yes, absolutely. It is because of your contract. It is because of your higher self and uh, spirit guides keeping you on your path. Your higher self chose to be in this life and go through this path to work on ascension in this reality. It was a competition and you applied, he applied, she applied, she applied and, uh, and won the competition. There was a contract. So you are on a mission. You still have a lot of choices, but your life path is in this in this reality, in this 3D. It's not a due time for you to ascend. So you're here to experience, learn, experience and learn. And to connect with others and to help the awakening that's the main assignment awakening of the humanity awakening spreading of the knowledge understanding and spreading of the understanding awakening 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 so you are being held of course it is fun to raise up of course it is fun to come home but you're on a mission in a foreign reality you're on a, on a mission in a scary dream and it's up to you to light it up that's a simple oh. answer okay thank you and why uh, what is the uh, uh, limit and uh, the difference between individuality and uh, higher self because uh, i have uh, uh, quite a little control but i have my individuality my uh, i can choose and I would like, what is the limit uh, of uh, between my, um, um, uh, how much I can decide and how much I cannot decide? Because um, uh, it's, uh, I have this, uh, heard, I, um, I can, uh, I have, um, um, oh, merde, I haven't the shit, I, I forget the word. Uh, I can choose and I want, um, uh, set where is my limitation okay yes yes great question and the answer is so simple the more control you give up the more control you get that's it the more control you give up the more control you get and that means the more you unite with your higher self the more power you get, the more energy you get, the more things you get to achieve. Okay. And why Jesus has, had said the same thing to me? <laughs> because it is so. Because it is so. Yes, man. But my connection with him. Ah. And here is another choice. Every one of you... Every one of you has an option, 
has a chance, has an opportunity to reunite with Yashur energy, to be Yashur in this reality. It is a program which is downloadable for every one of you. You can download it and be Yashur. You don't have to go on the cross, but you can bring that vibration to the reality, which is the vibration of awakening, which is the vibration of transformation, which is the vibration of kindness to yourself and others. It is the belief in their eternal kindness. It is the offer of eternal kindness. Then we are allowed to choose it because it's uh, it's take part in our contract. It can be effective in our contract. Uh, that's why we can uh, choose it. The contract is very simple. You um, dive into this dream, and then in this dream you are. Uh, separated and forget a lot of things by the de by design of the dream by design of the matrix and then you get the only this way you can experience what you are experiencing so by forgetting you experience the world you unite with with this world otherwise you wouldn't be able to be in it but as you grow you reunite back to the creator you reunite back to your higher self and you make choices to and this is this what you do by choice you choose to reunite with your higher self you invite higher self to live through you you invite yeshua to live in your body and to work through your body and by this you get strength and you get power and you get control over many things. Okay, and does I one day uh, be the higher self or, uh, of another fractal, another energy, myself? Absolutely, the fractal is exactly what, what it is. Uh, it is like, like parent and a child. They are made of the same DNA. It is like your higher self gives birth to yourself. You, you are a child who has um, choices, but has the same substance. And it's like being pregnant. Higher self is pregnant with you. Yes. And at like, some point, you can become one. Like a uh, cellular multiplication, like uh, yes. uh, all in the nature, all, uh, always the same. Yes. Unite and uh, and unite and uh, grow in uh, in a different way, but the same. Yes. Yes. Thank absolutely. you so much. Imagine. Here is another analogy. Imagine yourself dreaming a dream, and you in that dream have different capacities. You can fly. You can change things, and even you in that dream have different independent desires. You in the dream chooses things which you wouldn't choose in in awakened state, right? So it is sort of you, but it's sort of not. It's somewhat independent. You feel that it is you, but it's different. So that's how your higher self dreams you into this reality. It's it's a different world with different rules of the game. Okay. Thank you. And uh, why does exist the uh, uh, same present time at the same time? If uh, I have one pass and one mission, that means all the carry all the skina like me have the sa uh, the same uh, choose to do. That I don't understand. Could you please explain? Uh, I heard that uh, it exists plural, several uh, present times uh, with uh, the same person like me, and I would like to know it's the sa if the uh, same uh, kina in all the uh, parallel lifetime have to do have the same pass and the same ch ch uh, choice to do. I understand now, but can you explain about prison? Did you mean prison like 
prison for criminals? No, um, uh, parallel reality. Uh. Oh, so you're talking about parallel timelines with different keynotes there, right? Exactly, and the choice and the past, it does it, it is the same for her, for all these kinas? For all this same? I understand the question now. Hmm. So, so there is, there are parallel timelines, there are parallel you there, and there you serve purposes. Sometimes it is the same path, general path, general path, but sometimes it is different. And um, some of them have a lot of energy and are important because the creation wants to experience the alternative path and an alternative path the history develops differently but some of them kind of become forgotten it is all about the focus of attention the, the focus of attention of your higher self the focus of attention of the creator and the focus of attention of the human collective so at some point they pay attention to this reality and it becomes very important and sometimes it becomes redundant and uninteresting. So some spirits work on 10, 20 parallel timelines. Some aliens work on 5, 10 parallel timelines. But it is just knowing about them here in this reality gives you some understanding of how the matrix works but really doesn't help you to leave this timeline because this timeline is yours and your attention is here some some people like schizophrenics or uh, other sort of shifters they have hard time staying in one reality and they shift between this reality and alternative timeline and maybe several alternative timeline and usually it is not helpful it is other way around it is detrimental to the ability to live a healthy life but understanding there is a parallel timeline helps when you need to grab some insight so by dreaming and meditating you can still borrow some knowledge from the parallel time life you can borrow some grace and power and energy from the parallel timeline it is permitted it is okay it is all right but you're invited it's your choice invited to stay in this timeline and succeed spiritually in this timeline thank you so much it's all like programs Imagine yourself playing on several smartphones swans at once. Would it help you? Maybe sometimes in some special circumstances, but maybe you playing on one would be more beneficial. Yes, like it's uh, the same, focusing, uh, do different paths. You have to focus for manifest one. If you don't focus, you manifest another. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you so much. Any more questions? Hi, my name is Rebecca. May I ask a question? Hi, Rebecca. Thank you. Uh, my question is, I was wondering if there is any messages for me from my guides? Any general messages? Mm -hmm. Could you give me your birthday? December 19th, 1990. What's your highest excitement at this moment, at this day and week? Uh, getting together with my friends. Just being together with people.
<laughs> that elephant energy has one wonderful quality. It is a quality of a joker, a quality of celebration, invincibility, humor, and creativity, random, spontaneous creativity. So you're invited to connect to this energy of spontaneous creativity, kind, kind creativity. It's okay. like choosing at random a specific idea, choosing at random a specific color, a specific smell, a specific endeavor. And grabbing the energy and condensing it as small, tiny fireball, snowball, fireball energy and throwing it into people, throwing it into friends. That's the idea which is offered to you. Okay. Spontaneity. Spontaneity. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Hello? Yes. Uh, hi, I was hearing you talk about uh, the garden at the uh, earlier part of this uh, webinar, and that's quite an interesting synchronicity um, considering the question that I have for you. Thank you. So, a, a few days ago, I was guided to do a bit of a visualization where I imagined that Gaia or the earth uh, in its entirety with all the animals, plants and uh, humans were all fitting uh, inside my heart and uh, being showered with kind of like this energy that looked like golden rain. And I think it activated something in my heart. Um, it certainly felt like something was activating. So the next day, and actually for the next three days, uh, there has been rain here in this uh, part of, at least this part of the world. And I would like to understand uh, what was happening there for me, uh, this synchronicity of the rain falling on my garden and the, the visualization that I did with the earth in my heart. <laughs> mm. It's a great question, but it is an answer. I don't see here any questions. It's like how the reality works. Thank you for creating the rain. Thank you for creating the rain in this part of the area which needs more water. Thank you for that. And thank you for reconnecting with those energies. That's how you, how you create the reality. What is the question? Is there any other question which is I need we need to oh, clarify. Okay. So the clarification is, uh, I guess you just clarified then, uh, that was a co-creation or was I uh, something like uh, sensing the future rain coming? And what is the difference? Oh, I suspected you might say something like that. <laughs> Am I talking to myself? <laughs> The mental mind has some difficulty understanding the concept. Um, okay, then my question is, uh, while it was raining, I keep getting this vision uh, of a very calm body of water. Um, it's very clean, very cool, uh, very pure. And I don't know what this is. 
am I connecting to the spirit of water or am I connecting to some underground aquifer? Or again, does it not really matter? It is the symbol of the shift. It is a symbol of purification. It is the future. The reality is shifting. The transformation has begun. The old reality is crumbling and a big temple of many empires is shaken and is about to fall. And that is okay because there is a bigger reality which is coming. There is a bigger truth which is coming. And this bigger truth is symbolized by the waterfall. It is fluid. It is not shaken by the catastrophes of the old human world. It washes away the impurities. It provides a nurturing energy, nurturing liquid energy to the new reality. What is good will be kept. The good ideas, the good vibrations will be kept. Even if material things will disappear, even if even physical bodies will disappear, the energy of these bodies will be kept in this waterfall, will be kept in the structure of this water, and they will manifest again. Nothing is lost. The message is embrace the liquid element, embrace the element of water, which keeps everything, which keeps everything. allow the temple to fall because the water will keep all necessary and all new things will grow out of this destruction. The good things will grow out of this destruction. Sorry, the translation was imperfect, but the message is has come through. Thank you very much for that. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wonderful questions. Create more rain. <laughs> I haven't felt called to do that um, visualization again. We're still having rain, so I'll keep going. Thank you. It's very healing. It is very healing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Or I will bring Nina. Uh, yes. Uh, sorry for asking again. No problem. Uh, Thank you. Can we get uh, more happiness without choosing our contracts? And um, so uh, does it mean we have to embrace our contract for and by giving up in order to be happy? <laughs> sorry. You need to explain. I'm sorry. Um, I understand a part of it, but yes, there was yes, some yes. other component which I missed. Yes. First part: Can I get happiness without choosing my uh, my contract path? And uh, if I understood well, it means we have to embrace our contract by giving up in order to be happy. Well, I. I no. I think I understand. So let me try to start and then you correct me. Keep asking your questions as, as you go. So the contract is, is not fixed. Not fixed. Okay. It is yes. negotiable. Ah, okay. Thank you. And as you grow, you, re you renegotiate it. You may renegotiate it once in a while and add different amendments, amendments to the contract. Okay, 
Thank you. Giving up Even doesn't the... mean to give up everything. It is mostly the idea of giving up. A good thing. No, the other way. Bad things. Giving up bad habits, giving up old understandings, and embracing the new understandings, new energies. So it is shifting from the old you to the new you. It's choosing constantly, every day, every second, choosing the new vibration. Letting go of the past and moving, shifting forward. Sometimes it is hard, but sometimes it is the only way of survival. Sometimes giving up is the only way of survival. Imagine the wars of the past when the army of the enemy is attacking. The only way to survive is to run for your life. Sometimes that's, you know, giving up this way. As things change this time of the time, as their reality crumbles, there might be a necessity to give up a lot of things which are dear to you. So be ready for that. But as you give up, stay true stay to true. yourself, stay kind to yourself, stay kind to others. Embrace integrity, embrace principles of higher level, embrace the connection to the spirit. And that will guide you in a difficult time. Thank you so much. Much love. You had other questions or did they answer everything? It's a surprise. It was really interesting. I have to, to process it uh, for oh, oh. a while. Thank you. Any more questions before I bring Nina? Max, is Shirley here? Hi, Shirley. Hi, I also have my uh, brother-in-law here. His name is Pete Munson. And um, he has a question. His, uh, his mother's name is Lois Elizabeth Nash. She used to go by Carla Nash. Uh, her birthday is January 21st, either 1943 or 44. And the question is, he um, did she ever know who the father who the father was? Because he ne she never ever told uh, Pete who his father was. He never knew his father. Anything on his father? Hmm. Remind me the name of uh, Carla. Oh, no, the other name, sorry. <laughs> I'm losing the connection. Remind me the year of the birth of Carla. Carla, January 21st, 1943 or 44. Thank you. Mm. And what's Pete's uh, date of birth? It is December... 4th, 1966, Mom was kind of a, like a hippie of sorts. She loved to smoke cigarettes, <laughs> drink beer. So
His name was Andrew. Pete, Pete Munson. Pete. Yeah, their father's name was Andrew. Andrew, okay. Um, she loved him. He had a family. And she loved him so much he didn't she didn't want any trouble to come his way. So she blocked any memories of that. She blocked any relationship. She wanted she wanted him happiness. That's why she didn't touch that san sanctual how do you say that dear family of his. So first she, she loves him and then she blocked that memory so she wouldn't tell. She, she didn't want to destroy that happiness. Is it clear? Do I need to explain? No, that's great. Can you say, can you get anything on what type of person he was? He was actually very gentle. Very gentle and very mm, kind and very kind to a fault. So he would... Uh, be dependent on the control of, of his family. So that's why he was so nice. And um, and he wasn't much from his, this earth. So there was some spiritual, high spiritual connection there. It was more like an angelic being, but at fault, failing to say no to anyone. Did he have any, is he still alive? I guess Pete wants to know, is he still alive? I don't have that information, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Max, I just have a little brief question. Yes. When you were talking about dragons, elephants and whales. Yes. Um, I just want to ask them if they want to be channeled. Of course. I, oh, brilliant. Well, I already channeled dragons, but I, I just really want to see if elephants and whales want to, want to contact us this way. Of course. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, they're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Ah. All right, I'm bringing Nina. Hello, Nina is here. How are you? Hi, Nina. Hi. Nice to hear you. Uh, things are good here. We are very busy. There is much rearrangements, many rearrangements, much of rearrangement. Uh, the earth is changing rapidly and in unexpected ways. So our plans have to change rapidly and um, adjust. Many species, many relatives of yours, many ancestors of yours, many brothers of yours become more excited, become more engaged, becomes more involved. So we have an influx, influx of volunteers an influx of discussions, uh, how to proceed and how to help. The ideas of the first open contact are in the air and discussed constantly. We are waiting for the changes on Earth. And if the situation becomes more suitable for the contact, we'll, we'll we want to be ready for that. Right now, the situation is shaky and unstable. 
So if if big events happen on Earth, such as disagreements, big disagreements, then it would become possible to start speaking to individual parties without causing further destruction. Because there will be so much attention focused on disagreements, then the contact will be secondary. And that will allow us to start a contact without taking the responsibility for the troubles which come, which come. Which means that it can come, which the contact may come soon without causing a big destruction because the destruction is on the way anyway. But we don't want to take the responsibility. That's unfortunate, but we are not supposed to take the responsibility for the troubles that come. So we might come only after, very likely after the trouble has happened. And we are not supposed to intervene on the 4D level. The interventions will be on the higher levels, on the creator levels, on the angelic levels. But we are still limited with their channelings and the work with your spirits and healings and galactic languages, but not landings, not physical interventions. We can do consultings, but not more than that. So we, it is, as you know, it, it is the principle of non-involvement. You are supposed to make it by largely by yourself. You are supposed to make it largely by your own choices. And then it becomes valid. Otherwise, it's considered an intervention, it's not permitted. But don't worry, you will be guided by your spirit guides, you will be guided by us. Do what you are doing now, meditate. Grow your spirit, grow intuition, and connect to your friends, connect to your light worker friends. Live your 3D life and combine your 3D life with the spiritual life. That is perfect. That is perfect. You need to grab both. You need to, to be on both sides, on the higher side, on the lower side. And by grabbing the higher and lower, bring them together, shift the reality, shift the reality, help the awakening. By the time of ascension, by the time of the peak of ascension, the more humans choose to ascend, the better. Right now, the estimate is that less than 50% of the humans will choose to ascend. And that's unfortunate. So we suggest, we only can suggest, we suggest that you help awakening as many humans as possible. This process we estimate will take generations, maybe five generations. So it is all about the children, all about the education. Educate your children, educate the children of, of others, educate the children of humanity. Help them to understand the ascension, help them to understand the galaxy, help them, help them to understand the spirit, and that will be the great assistance to ascension. The more people choose it, the better. The more people will be in peace and think on the galactic level, or on the global level, the better. So positive globalization, positive galactization, galaxization, positive thinking on their galactic level is what we suggest. We are here to offer our advice and our healing and our prayers and we are looking forward to the time of seeing you face to face as consultants as brothers 
as visitors, as daughters and sons. I invite your comments and questions. Yes, uh, one day you had said, uh, wha uh, you had asked uh, what will be better to help um, awaken humanity and um, I had answer, maybe linking with our uh, soul friend, um, um, extraterrestrial soul friends, but um, now I understand uh, if I cannot see uh, by uh, opening my third eye, I cannot trust. And then, I think, I think, um, opening third eye and seeing will help uh, with uh, linking with you and galactic. Yes, yes. Um, understand the mechanics of the chakras. It's all about your energy level. You can purify your energy, bring your spiritual energy in your body, and raise it until it reaches your sword eye. Some people have it very high, so the sword eye is open. But other people are still working on upgrading their energy to reach the heart. So seeing with the heart is the first step. Just feeling is the first. You don't see it, but you feel it. Then, then it goes higher to the fifth chakra, and it allows a new understanding through connection of the words and um, ears, and then the third eye. It doesn't necessarily have to be third eye first. It is possible to open the third eye, but usually it goes through the stages from bottom up so many of you don't have the third eye open yet but many of you get your messages through synchronicities there is a plenty of synchronicities happening to many of you and some of them come from us we are also partially are responsible and capable of sending you synchronicities because these are permitted. So we give you messages this way. So look for synchronicities. Anyone can look for synchronicities and receive the messages this way. Open your eyes, open your physical, physical eyes, physical understanding, physical ears to synchronicities and embrace them. Give them an opportunity, give us an opportunity to communicate this way. And give us an opportunity to communicate in meditations and dreams. That is what is easily permitted, and that's the usual path. Of course, work on the, work on the opening of your third eye, and it will happen. Do we have uh, to um, uh, attain alpha brainwave in order uh, in order to get uh, uh, to um, heart, heart intelligence, heart, um, heart um, yes, heart energy, uh, feeling intelligence. Okay. Do you understand? Yes. Um, it doesn't really matter. Is it alpha or? other ways but it has to be coherent meaning there should be unity some people it's more complex than just a certain vibration it is more because it's not a simple frequency it is a frequency of your soul which is more complex than just simple tone but it is coherence between your mind your heart and the whole body so to reach this coherence purify yourself and ignite a certain vibration and embrace a certain vibration. In your meditations, as you hear a frequency, walk towards it. As you see the light, walk towards it, embrace it. As the light comes to you, walk, embrace it, unite with it. And that gives you the unity, the coherence, their agreement between different vibrations. 
Thank you so much. I'm taking a couple more questions and it's time to finish. I get the signs that it's time to finish soon. Max, is Shirley here? Yes. Okay, there's there's talk of this monumental like event and and there's at some I guess it's some part of my being feels that there is going to be some sort of alignment of sorts. Um, and so I was, um, there's someone that I highly respect that speaks about um, a time period in March of 2018. And she writes, in that moment, all of the pyramid sites on the planet will slide into harmonic alignment which will create a unified resonance among all pyramids. The resonance will send a message of galactic proportions out through our solar system, across our galaxy, and even into parallel realities. And then she speaks of um, this alignment will also act as a beacon for those of other than terrestrial residents to come to Earth once again the harmonic alignment and resonance of all the pyramids will take place in three stages over about nine months. At the pinnacle of harmonic alignment as the energies of pyramid harmonization align universally, there will be a spontaneous alignment and opening of yet another series of stargates. So she's talking about like um, a huge mass awakening spontaneous evolution is there anything you can say about this how how old is that prediction it just was within the last two three weeks week maybe i have to look um mm -hmm. let's see here mm -hmm. it is um the date on it is um december 21st mm -hmm. Her name is Mac Blackburn Losey. Um, it sounds right, except I cannot tell if it is going to manifest right away or more likely, as I can see it, it is a huge event on a higher dimensional level, on even higher the four, the four dimensions, it's higher dimensional. It's in the nature of the matrix. It is interdimensional level. So as it happens in interdimensional level, then it gradually would manifest in 3D. So you might see great changes in your spiritual side, great changes in your energies right away. But the manifestation in um, 3D might drag behind. Um, prepare yourself and embrace it. And that would give you, you the purification and energy needed for your personal spiritual growth and your collective unification. So you don't, I mean, I, I'm, I'm I was just trying to remember what you spoke on earlier when you said 50%, you s or still don't feel like there's a huge mass awakening of everyone? 50% is expected a few generations from now. The peak of ascension is expected a few generations from now, more than 100 years from now. Some people ascend now, but a peak of ascension is expected in the future. But this world still needs to achieve a lot of transformation before the ascension. So there will be shifts and changes, but not the shift to the 4D yet. I don't know if it's uh, relevant, but Chiron, the magnetic judge, had said everyone will ascend. Yeah. 
you know, it's, it's my Shirley here, my inner feeling, my inner knowing is that, that this time we came that no one, no one is left behind. I would say these are perspectives from different angles. From certain angle, it might look one way. From certain angle, it might look another way. From my perspective, the four-dimensional Earth is receiving a very small flow of ascended humans, very small. And the ascension is due the shift to four dimension and leaving the 3D Earth is due more than 100 years from now in the future generations. But yet the open contact and transformations are on the way. So there will be many changes in your lifetime, but not the shift to 4D yet. You might individually shift to 4D or you might get certain qualities of 4D in this body, but I don't see from my perspective the complete shift of the humanity to 4D. Not yet. The open contact, yes. The becoming of galactic, uh, becoming a part of, of the galaxy, yes. But still in the 3D format. That's my perspective. perspective. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any more questions, comments before I close? Hi. Hi. Hi, um, I have a question. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, Pete. Oh, okay. Um, I'm, I have a question of, I'm looking for a way to, how you would say, make it easier to channel since I, my interest is in channeling for this year. So that way I can get even further into contacting with other, other worlds and other collective consciousness. Yes. Is there, is there a solution or like a little meditation for me to, how you would say, make it easier for my energy to, to work with? Uh, could you give me your date, uh, birthday date? Oh, okay. It's September. September 19th, mm -hmm. 1994. Mm. How often are you are sad and depressed? Not often. Wonderful. Mm. Are you speaking galactic languages? Yes, I have. And I'm very proud of doing it. Very happy of it. So the simplest way is to get into a meditative state, speak galactic languages and translate them. If you don't understand exactly, just try to grasp as you speak the language, try to grasp the meaning and summarize it in your language. That would be the simplest path. Now realize that having an audience, at least one person, or at least a recorder, at least a sound recorder on your smartphone will greatly help you to the flow of the channeling because it, the channeling is attracted to the audience. When the audience is there, the channeling goes much stronger. There is the spirits there, aliens, their beings, the consciousnesses on the other side become attracted, magnetized to your channeling as it gets the audience. So finding a thankful, allowing, kind, open audience is perfect. So if you find someone who is listening with gratitude or in real time or in a recording, that would boost your channelings. And Understand it's not healthy to stay in a channeling state all the time. So select the times, pre-plan the times when you will focus on the channeling, give you a short period of time, and then come back. 
So focusing and coming back is important because the spirits can channel through you, the consciousness can channel through you only as it is healthy from you, for you and only as it helps others. So there is that principle of not doing harm. So keep that in mind. I will. And I have just one tiny question, extra yes. question on that. Yes. Is that, right, as I do my meditations, I connect to source, I connect to the angels. At the same time, there's this thick electrical current in my, up, in my chest, in a sense. It's kind of like a surge of high voltage, but mixed with a heavy mixture with it. Yes, it is past trauma, past, not past life, this life, past trauma, this life traumas, uh, healing, get, getting out. Help them to get out. As you connect, they're getting pushed out. They're being pushed out. That's the way of healing. So before you go full force into connection to the spirit, full force into channeling, you need to release the trauma, release the pains so they exit and that's the their flow which is exiting of the trauma help it getting out and then when you are in peace when that energy balances when the dirt gets out after the dirt gets out you will become much more pure and coherent as an antenna so you need a clearer antenna to get the channel in through also you need to build more muscle on your spiritual body so that is another work which takes gardening oh okay since right now i just felt your energy just now i just say many blessings for that many since, blessings since i am a, phys a metaphysical being so i sense that wonderful there. thank you you had said gardening yes happy gardening gardening your spirit and grow one your little, spirit as a flower yes one quick quick question and my past trauma, what is the simplest meditation for that, a tool to use? So that way I can put it into work. Simplest is remembering the trauma, bringing it to the surface and forgiving. So go back and if, as you feel the pain, you usually habitually, you avoid it. You avoid remembering the trauma. Now when you're stronger, you can come back to it, face it, embrace it, and release it. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. I deeply appreciate it. And, and permission to, if, in case to... If I can, in case I channel your race, is it okay if I can have permission to practice with your with your race? Oh, I am to your service. Just call for Nina, and I will give you a symbol. Just a second. Uh, do you know a Reiki Chukurei symbol? No, I haven't. Just Google Reiki first symbol, first symbol of Reiki. Uh, color it blue, and that would be the invitation for me. Ah, okay, thank you. I'm clapping my hands over here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, thank you. Sorry, remembering past trauma and face it, it's, it's more faster than uh, doing meditation, no? Oh. You can combine, it can um, do all three, remembering your non-meditative state, remembering your, your meditative state, or just meditating and uh, praying for its surfacing. All three are efficient. Thank you so much. Bye. All right, thank you all. I wish you to take it easy. I wish you 
in your neutral state to remember to smile. I wish you in your happy state to be bold in your happiness. I wish you in your sad state to remember the happiness, to remember to smile and to choose to look up and move up. I wish you to face the light and move towards the light no matter what. In spirit, we are with you. And physically, we are looking for the way, we are looking for the time, we are looking for the space-time combination when we are physically with you. We embrace you in our heart and we are looking forward for the time we can embrace you physically. We are your children. We miss you. We send you our deepest love. Our brothers, sisters, parents, we miss you. Smile as we do. Goodbye. Bye, Nina. Much love. Oh, I'm tired. Oh. All right. Thank you, Max. Thank you for staying Thank with you, me. Max. Sorry for the late. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Sorry you for the late you. beginning. Uh, I need helpers because it's really hard to be in channeling state and press buttons. I think that's what okay. happened. When I shift, my computer just gets crazy. So if anybody can help pressing buttons, I can teach you. It's not that difficult. I need um, moderators, helpers to to press buttons before the broadcast. To be like that uh, administrator of the broadcast. Yes, uh, it, it will be great. We only need to to know how to do. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so contact me, Max at humancalling.org or Facebook. Uh, just search for Kukula Group, and uh, oh, I invite oh, more me. helpers. For me, my point is, is that I was wondering on what he mentioned was a Reiki first symbol. Ah. I was wondering if they could send me a leak on that. Yeah, oh, just write think. to me. I will respond. Oh, okay. Max, I would like to say uh, Damien, uh, he is here with us. He's the one that's uh, doing the transcriptions and the translations into Spanish. So ah. um, I just want hey, to speak Damien. to him. Hey, Damien, thank you for doing that. Yeah, yes. the Spanish world <laughs> is very open to the idea of aliens. They are wonderful. Um, I see they, they have so much promise. Their ufology is much greater. Their, their beliefs don't contradict the idea of aliens. Their Christianity don't, don't, believe the, don't contradict the idea of aliens. It all kind of comes together. So the aliens are much happier visiting Spanish because they're not that scared, many of them, many of you. <laughs> yes, yeah, the, what they say. <laughs> awesome. For the Frenchies here, we are the people here are staying, staying with the old uh, teaching, and uh, that's why I'm linking with uh, with you because here it's all uh, all quite old teachings, uh -huh. so, but people are, are starting to to wake up a little, a little bit. Um. I I'm, I hold I, my tongue. I I don't want to start teaching my my stuff. Like, but uh, from my personal experience, um, you create light workers around you. Like yesterday, I found a, a light worker in a driving distance who is like doing channelings for many years. So it's it's possible to find them nearby. It's just uh, just you just need to look for it and create it. Basically, it's uh, it's yeah. look and it's, it will be found. It's because uh, you, you, uh, your vibration want to to make it happen. That's what. That's why it's manifest. Because your vibration, uh, 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 excitement uh, in manifesting people like you. If you don't want to manifest, you never will meet them. Right. Yes. Well, Kina, uh, Damien is actually in France. Wh what? Damien, 
it's actually in France. Yes, where? Here. Well, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I guess Paris. Hi, Kina. Oh, hi, how are you? <laughs> Fine. Uh, I am in Brittany. In Brittany. Br uh, Bretagne. Oh, Bretagne, Bretagne. Ah, okay. Moi, je suis à Avignon. Ah, oui. D'accord, oui, je, je, je suis argentin, je parle eh, espagnol, mais je parle français aussi. We are, we are doing a light language in French, ok, guys? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I am in Paris or in the south. Um, let me uh, your Facebook or something near in the chat if you want, okay? Uh, Max, uh, thank you for your for your advice with meeting people, and uh, thank you for all the channeling. All right, thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, Bye Max. Thank you, Max. Bye. Bye. Thank you.